Hello there. Welcome back to Dr. K. Prem Primer Lecture Series, presenting by Dr. K. Prem. That's me. Today we will discuss about a very interesting uh, topic. Uh, but before going into the topic, let me ask you one question. That's about a cloning vector. Here you see which one of the following vectors can integrate into lambda phase genome. I'm repeating, which one of the following vectors can integrate into lambda phase genome? So there is a vector which can integrate into the lambda phase. What is that I'm asking you? So here we have four options. The first one is uh, Cosmids, posmids, phasmids, and M13 vectors. The first option is A. It's a cosmids, posmids, phasmids, and M13 vectors. So the vector which can integrate into the lambda phase genome. What is that vector? So answer is answer is posmids posmids are the cloning vectors which can integrate into the lambda phase genome that's that's a specialty of uh, posmids right so whenever someone asks you wherever they ask you in any exam so cloning vector which have a ability to integrate into the lambda phase genome Right, such vector, such cloning vector is phosmids. Right, so today's topic is phosmids. I'm telling you, today's topic is phosmids. So phosmids are nothing but plasmids with lambda phase, lambda phase attachment sites. Plasmids plus lambda phase attachment sites are termed as phosmids. Plasmids plus lambda phase attachment sites are termed as a phosmids. See, plasmids plus attachment sites of lambda phase, this genetic combination of plasmids plus attachment sites of lambda phase are termed as posmids. Posmids are the plasmids with lambda phase attachment sites. I'm mentioning lambda phase attachment sites. Lambda phase attachment sites are useful in site specific recombination between lambda phase genome and bacterial genome. So lambda phase attached sites and bacterial attachment sites facilitates the recombination of the combination of a site specific recombination between a phase and a bacterial genome. Here uh, to construct the Phosmids, we need a plasmid plus lambda phase attachment sites. So this genetic combination uh, is uh, called as phosmids. So plasmids plus lambda phase attachment sites are called as phosmids. In this lecture, we'll focus on, this lecture will focus on uh, construction of phosmids and the second one is features of plasmid, phosmids. And third one is advantages of phosmids, right? In the first step, we'll see the construction of uh, phosmids. So you see here, this is a, a early version, early version of uh, uh, cloning vector. That's a RSF1050, whose uh, size is uh, 7.4 KB. This uh, early version of cloning vector 
and it is having two genetic selection markers. One is a polycin or polycin resistant gene, and the second one is ampicillin resistant gene. Colcin is a polypeptide uh, uh, inhibitor, and for that uh, there is a colcin inhibitor, uh, colcin resistance gene is there. And the second uh, genetic selection marker is ampicillin resistance gene. That's a beta lactamase, which can uh, degrade the uh, penicillins into so penicillinic acid and provides the resistance to the host, which is uh, propagating the plasmid. And the uh, ne the next next element is ORI. That's the origin of replication of plasmid, which provides the or facilitates the uh, autonomous replication of a plasmid. So these three elements: collagen resistance gene, origin of replication of plasmid, ampicillin resistance gene are flanked by two different two different uh, restriction endonuclease sites. They are uh, none other than uh, Eco R1 restriction site and BAMH1 restriction site. So this is a plasmid structure uh, we are going to use for uh, construction of osmids. And on the other hand, here you can see this is a, a lambda phase genome uh, whose size is uh, 48.5 kilobase space. And you see it is uh, having uh, genes uh, responsible for uh, uh, multiplication, recombination of plasmid, uh, immunity, immunity, and site specific recombination. So, these genes you see here, this part of left border uh, genes which are involved in the uh, synthesis of head and tail, and the middle one here you see POP, this is nothing but a attachment site which is involved in the site specific recombination site specific recombination and you see here n and c i is uh, required for uh, immunity and the rest all for uh, uh, dna replication so today our important uh, the important feature of lambda phase is attachment site so here yeah, in the lambda phase there are two attachment sites left and right in between there is a core uh, element so p uh, p is a border of uh, attachment side and p prime also border of attachment side o is the core element of uh, attachment side this region is almost uh, having a 240 base pair length the 240 base pair length of uh, attachment site is very much uh, essential for site specific recombination between lambda phase genome and bacterial genome Right, this is the attachment site. Now, to construct the to construct the phosmid, we need a plasmid features, plasmid features as well as lambda phase uh, attachment sites. You see, uh, the plasmid features uh, in the plasmid uh, are present: collagen or ampicillin resistant gene, original replication in between the eco R1 and uh, BAMH1 sites. Right. Even, even the uh, lambda phase attachment sites are also present between the eco R1 restriction site and the BAMH1 restriction site. Right? Uh, I forgot to tell you one more feature of lambda phase that's very, very important. This is a uh, uh, cos sites which are present in the right border and left border. The cos sites are the very much necessary for in vitro packing of lambda genome, uh, packing of uh, genome, as well as the same cos sites are useful in the circularization of uh, lambda phase genome once entered into the host cell. So, cos means cohesive sites. Cos means cohesive sites. Yeah. Here, to construct the made we need a lambda phase genome attachment sites, which are uh, there in between the eco R1 and damage one site and uh, plasmid features are also present between the eco R1 and uh, damage one restriction sites. So if you digest the, uh, if we digest the plasmid and lambda, lambda phase genome with eco R1 and damage uh, one sites uh, enzymes, then you get uh, easy. 
here the damage e coordinate and damage one uh, enzymes are uh, cutting the lambda phase genome and releasing the lambda phase attachment sites right this is a lambda phase attachment site in addition to the e coordinate and damage one the uh, lambda phase uh, attachment sites also have uh, other enzymes called as uh, other enzyme restriction enzyme uh, called as ins to pst1 and entry these enzymes can be used to, to use for uh, screening of uh, recombinants and uh, at the same time the plasmid also digested with the e coar1 and uh, uh, damage one and releases the releases the uh, dna fragment with the collagen or origin of replication and ampicillin resistance gene you see it is uh, released so the uh, plasmid fragment with the genetic markers and the origin of replication and the phase gene phase uh, dna fragment with the attachment sites are uh, uh, are having the e coar1 and damage one sites so when they are ligated the e coar1 ligate with the e coar1 site and damage one site can ligate with the damage one and you get a uh, recombinant plasmid uh, recombinant vector with the uh, plasmid features and uh, uh, lambda phase attachment sites so the lambda phase attachment site and the plasmid fragment with the genetic selection marker and the origin of replication are ligated ligated with the t4 dna ligase and ligation can be done at the uh, lower temperature to facilitate the efficient ligation uh, after ligation the ligate ligated product is transformed and then uh, uh, this uh, screen for uh, recombinants which is having the plasmid features and the lambda phase attachment site so here this is a plas this is a, a, a mo molecule which is having the uh, plasmid features such as a collagen resistance marker origin of replication and ampicillin resistance uh, gene and and the lambda phase attachment sites so this combination of plasmid and uh, lambda phase attachment site uh, is called as uh, phosmid you see this is called as phosmid so this is how you can construct the phosmid by using the lambda phase attachment sites and the plasmid molecule as i told you in the beginning of the lecture that phosmids have a ability to integrate into the lambda phase genome right so that we will see in the next slide so this is what is the lambda phase genome right and here uh, you can see the uh, lambda phase attachment site right and uh, right uh, cos site and the left cos site whose length is 12 base pairs and uh, this is a phosmid right so now now the phosmid integrate into the lambda phase so that is called as reversible recombination recombin recombination integration reversible recombinational integration so reversible recombinational integration of phosmid this is a phosmid into the lambda phase right so the phosmid and the phase can undergo the spite site specific recombination by using the lambda phase attachment sites and phosmid attachment sites so site specific recombination between the attachment sites of phosmid and lambda phase gives you the uh, lambda phase molecule with the one or more phosmid molecules see this is a lambda phase and where uh, the uh, phosmid molecule is integrated phosmid molecule is integrated this is this is a reversible recombinational insertion of a plasmid this is also called as a lifting of plasmid so this is what is the important property of the phosmid in the next slide we will see the uh, other uh, features of uh, phosmids and followed by the advantages right plasmid integrate phosmid integrated into genome of phase 
via attachment sites. Yeah, here some text uh, written for uh, for explanation. We will go through that. The regions on the phage and the bacterial genomes in which the recombination occurs are termed as a attachment site. What are attachment sites? In the DNA regions in the lambda phase and the DNA regions in the bacterial genome, which would those regions facilitate the recombination between the lambda phase and uh, lambda phase and uh, uh, bacterial genome. That sites are called as uh, attachment sites. You see, the regions on the phase and bacterial genomes in which the recombination occurs are uh, term attachment sites. So attachment sites facilitate the site specific recombination between the lambda phase genome and the bacterial genome. So the regions which are facilitating the site specific recombination such, such a DNA regions are called as uh, uh, attachment sites. So phase functional attachment site length is around 240 base space. So the phase DNA region, which uh, is uh, facilitating the uh, recombination, that uh, length is uh, 240 base space. And the core sequence length is uh, 15 base space. So it is having a left and right and the core. Right, core region is having 15 base space. It's an unaltered one. So unaltered sequence is very, very important for the recombination between the lambda phase and the bacterial genome. So the core sequence you can see G C T T T T T A T A C T A and A. So this 15 base pair region is very very important for uh, recombination of uh, our very important element in the attachment site. So the genetic combination of plasmid vector and attachment sites of lambda phase uh, DNA are termed as uh, plasmid. As I told you that. Plasmid plus lambda phase attachment site. This uh, that genetic combination is uh, termed as uh, plasmids. These vectors contain regulatory elements of both plasmids and phases for replication and propagation in suitable host. So plasmid can uh, act as a plasmid, uh, or it can act as a uh, it can integrate into the phase based on the condition of the host right so it's having a all the elements to all the plasmids have a, all the plasmid elements to survive and replicate as a plasmid as well as a, it can integrate into phase whenever there is a phase genome uh, plas, uh, plasmid containing host is super infected infected with the lambda phase genome lambda, lambda phase right so these phosphate may insert into the lambda genome by means of site-specific recombination using attachment sites, I told you. This is a reversible recombination insertion. As I told you that the phosphates integrated into the lambda phase genome is a reversible recombination insertion because again, they can excite the uh, plasmids can be excised from the genome. It's a reversible recombination insertion of plasmid into phase referred as a lifting the plasmid and generates a phase genome containing one or more plasmid molecule. So uh, more than one plasmid molecule can integrate into the lambda phase genome. Right, this is the features of uh, uh, phosphate and advantages of the phosphate. You see, uh, it can, as I told you, that it can act as a plasmid as well as the phase. Uh, phase depends on the uh, host and host condition. So, lytically, it has a bacteria phase and non lytically as a plasmid. Phosphates can be used as a plasmid while cloning. You can do all manipulation or manipulation during the cloning. Uh, uh, plasmids can be used as a plasmid for cloning purpose, right? So once you clone and transform and you screen the recombinant uh, phosmids and those phosmids are again, if the, that is infected, 
with the lambda phase and it is integrated into the lambda phase and those can be uh, the as a phase particles you can uh, store them for a very long time you see Pla phosmids can be used as a plasmid while the cloning of dna fragments and the recombinants and the recombinants can be stored as a phase particles because they have infinite shelf life shelf life of the plasmid is less than the uh, lambda phase so recombinant uh, phosmids can be stored as a phase particles so that we can increase the shelf life of the recombinants screening of the phase particles gives much cleaner results than the bacterial colonies when you want to screen or uh, recombinant for you want to screen the transformations for uh, recombinants so, so as a plague you can get the more uh, uh, clean results by using the blotting technique than the colony bacterial colonies so it can be used as a phase cloning vector from which a recombinant plasmid can be released so these are the advantages of the phosmids and i am uh, at the end of my lecture so this is all about the uh, phosmids construction and definition and features features of the phosmid if at all you like this lecture try to subscribe and as well as uh, if you subscribe and you will be notified about my future video also so try to subscribe my channel that's a dr k prem primer and if you want if you can if you like it you can share with your friends and uh, don't forget to like give thumbs up and if you have any doubts over the content and uh, if you have any other doubts also on the fast mates or other videos also you can reach me through the comment section just write to me i'll get back to you as soon as i see your uh, comment so now i'm taking uh, see you again with one more video until then bye bye so don't forget to subscribe channel that's a dr k prem primer thank you for listening